Good morning. Welcome to our worship here this morning at Locust Grove United Church of Christ in York, Pennsylvania. Please read responsibly with me from the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Are you awake? Are you alert? Christ is coming into our eyes in a new way. Are you watching the signs? Are you interpreting what is happening today? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Do you see opportunities for ministry? Do you see the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the needy? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Come, let us worship and let us work in the reign of God. Christ has extended the invitation. Let us work together in the reign of God on earth. you have affected in our lives. 
when we think about the great blessings of all, the gift of yourself in human flesh, Jesus Christ, we joyfully acknowledge that our hope in you is not misplaced. We choose to serve you because we choose to touch our lives so graciously in Christ. May our faithful witness and the service of our lives reveal the depth of our love and gratitude as we worship you, O oh God, and as we praise and adore you in Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit. are here today, we would like to have anyone who served to stand up. Anyone who served in the military? There's one. Terry. Give my hand. Thank you. <laughs> and and let's, let's have a prayer together for all who have served. Lord, on this day after Veterans Day, we think of all who have served so faithfully to keep our country free. And we think for those who are serving near and far and the sacrifices they made to leave their families and friends to journey across the world. Some were stateside, some were around the world, but all served, Lord, in many, many ways. And we just want to take this time today, Lord, to honor them, to pray for them, and to thank them.
and to ask you to keep all who are serving safe and out of harm's way, and that you would bless this country as we hear of wars all over this world. We pray that we would be able to remain in peace and that you would continue to bless those who serve as we give thanks today. And may it not be just today, but each and every day. We thank anyone we see with a hat that reveals that they were in the service to thank them for their service for our country. And may you bless our country today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lessons for today, the epistle lesson is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Our gospel lesson today is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are running out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May it bless our lives. Good morning. Good morning. Let us go before our Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this new day you have given to us, and for the blessing and be able to be together. We ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts today through the words of song, through the words of scripture, and through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I would imagine that most of us gathered here today remember that song, This Little Light of Mine. Probably learned it in Sunday school, right? Remember how it goes? Of course, you got to put your finger up, right? Okay. 
Join me. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And the verse I'm especially thinking about today is the one that says, Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So I guess the question is, how do we do that? How do we let our light shine until Jesus comes? How do we keep it lit? Perhaps the answer is found in our parable for today. Ten bridesmaids went to a wedding with their lamps, ready to light the way when the bridegroom would appear, for they knew that was their job. You see, at weddings in Jesus' day, when the bridegroom appeared, the guests, including the bridesmaids, lit torches and went out to greet him. And then in a festive procession, the entire wedding party walked to the groom's home where the parents were waiting for the ceremony and the extended banquet that would follow and continue for several days. The bridesmaid's job was to keep their lamps lit, to let their light shine. Only they never knew when the bridegroom would come. The bridegroom in this story took so long that all 10 bridesmaids fell asleep while they were waiting for him to come. And because it took longer than expected, five of them didn't have enough oils and their lamps went out. But five of them came with extra oil, knowing it might take a long time. So five came prepared and five didn't. And the parable ends with the words, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In other words, be ready, be prepared. Many have thought over the years, they knew the hour. I can't tell you how many people came up to me at the beginning of COVID and told me that this was the hour Jesus was coming back. But in reality, none of us know when he will return. What we do know from scripture is that Jesus will return one day. But the question is when? And how do we keep our lights going until he does? Because if we're honest, it's been a very long time, over 2,000 years. Even the Apostle Paul believed that Jesus was going to come back in his lifetime. So did the church members Matthew wrote his gospel for. And as they went through persecution, and were ostracized by their community and family members, their lights started to go out a little bit. Their hope of his return helped them to get through the day. But as the years went by, their lights got dimmer. They just weren't sure they had enough oil. We kind of know what that is like, don't we? We may not have gone through persecution for our faith, but we have had our share of troubles. Some of us have serious health problems. Some of us have relationship issues to work through. Some of us feel all alone at times and wonder if God is even hearing, let alone answering our prayers. And some of us are having serious doubts about it all. We know what that is like. And we know how easy it is to get distracted by the troubles and the struggles of our daily lives. We know there are times when our lights get dim, especially when we focus on those difficulties. And as we focus on them, we tend to lose our hope. So what keeps your lamp lit? What keeps your light shining? 
because it doesn't just stay lit, it needs fuel to keep shining. Those five bridesmaids who were called foolish ran out of fuel they needed to keep their lamps lit, and they were left in the darkness. What do we need to keep ours lit? Well, we learn from those bridesmaids that the key, the answer, is being prepared. Being prepared that this long wait for the Lord to return may continue a bit longer. Being prepared that we have what we need to keep our lamps lit, that we have enough oil in the reserve. In the fifth chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, Let your light shine before men and women that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. We help to fuel our lamps, our light. We shine our light by serving, by volunteering, by helping others. By those good works, we keep our lamps going. Another way we keep it lit is by staying connected to Jesus through prayer and reading the Bible. I know I've said it many times before, but it's so important. It's our lifeline. We keep it lit by coming to church and being a part of this community here. We keep it lit by inviting the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and to help us grow in our faith. We keep it lit by putting, putting God first in everything we do, by putting God and God's will for our lives over everything else as we put aside our wants and follow God's will for us. And as we allow God to move and push us to go where God wants us to go. Pastor Alice McKenzie once led a year-long spirituality class with a dozen students committed to the practice of Christian prayer. Over the Christmas break, each student committed to reading a particular book of the Bible prayerfully from the beginning to the end. One of her students, a young man in his mid-twenties, recounted that after Christmas, his wife had gone to visit her parents in another city for several days, and that left him home in their apartment with their two-year-old English beagle named Sadie. Every night around 10 p.m., he would sit on their love seat and spend a half hour on his devotional reading. Well, soon Sadie got the notion that this was a good opportunity to pursue her own spiritual growth, so she began hopping up and sitting next to him on the love seat and putting her head in his lap. Well, one night he got caught up in watching the news and didn't go to the love seat at the prescribed time, Sadie came over and began to pull at his pants leg. One night he was exhausted and went to bed at 9.45. Just as he was drifting off to sleep, he heard a whimpering and felt the blanket being pulled off the bed. Looking over the side of the bed, there was Sadie, the bed spread in her teeth, calling him to prayer. He decided that some dogs are bird dogs, and some dogs were sheep dogs, and Sadie was a prayer dog. Sadie helped him keep his lamp lit as she kept leading him to prayer. So what is Sadie saying to you and me? Are there times you and I need to go to our love seat or recliner and spend some prayerful time reading the Bible? Are there times we go to sleep and forget to read or pray or connect with God some days? Is Sadie tugging at your pants leg? I know she is mine. I think Reverend Sue from a blog called Companions on the Way wrote it best. The difference between being spiritually ready, she writes, and included by the bridegroom and missing out is simply the readiness for the long haul and the amount of commitment to the process expressed in the readiness to get the extra oil, to be everything it takes. That is what Sadie and, of course, God is calling all of us to, that commitment 
to getting that extra oil for the days ahead. For we don't know when the bridegroom, Jesus, will return, but we do know that we need to be ready. Keep on studying, praying, serving, and putting God first keeps our lamps lit, our light shining. And if you don't have a Sadie to tug your leg, pants legs and get you to reading scripture or to be in prayer, find an accountability partner and let them be your Sadie to help remind you to do that or to ask each other what you're reading, what you're praying about, what's helping you grow. Because life gets busy and difficult and the wait is long. And we need each other to do this. So let's do it one more time. Come on, put your fingers up. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. So we have two birthdays this week. One of them is Carson. And we said when we lost our dear Effie, we would remember her birthday because she would have been 100 on what day? 16. And what day is Carson's birthday? Tomorrow. So remember, sing happy birthday to Effie in heaven and to Carson. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you and many more. And we want to continue to keep Deb and her family in our prayers. The loss of her mom. And let's lift Carson up for, for healing and strength. <coughs> and um, as we think of Veterans Day, we think of peace that we're praying for Ukraine and for Israel and for the fighting to stop in Palestine and all of those situations. Let's pray for peace and pray for for veterans who deal with a lot. You know, there are a lot of homeless veterans. There are veterans who have memories that haunt them. Let's pray for all of them as well. Linda asks that we um, joy of her daughter-in-law having a birthday this week. So let's. She has a birthday. And um, Charlie's mom had to face some little changes in her life that were big for her, but she's doing a little bit better. So let's pray that it continues to get better every day. And um, Shirley was saying, let's keep Doug in our prayers. Some days are good and some days aren't so good. Let's pray he has more good than not so good. And um, today, our, our York Association meeting is happening this afternoon. I know Kara Beth is joining me, and we're having our annual meeting. So pray for God's guidance at both of those meetings. I didn't see that. Oh, I'm sorry. Karen and Rod's in a first grade. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Happy anniversary. What day? 14, okay. All right, well, let's go before our Lord in prayer. Lord, we want to keep our lamps lit. We want to be ready when you return. And we want to be doing what you want us to do because, and not just because we want to make sure we're good kids doing what we need to do. We want to do what we need to do to grow in you, Lord to have a closer relationship with you and to be able to share the love we have for you with others. 
But sometimes, Lord, the weight of life and the struggles we go through, health concerns and grief and loss and day-to-day -day life, it's difficult, Lord, you know that. And sometimes our lights grow dim and we forget to take that time in your presence Maybe to read a scripture passage, to pray, just to sit quietly with you and to allow you to speak to us. And if we're able to serve, there are so many needs and you want us to shine our light in the things that we do reflecting what you call us to do, Lord. We don't want to run out of that oil, that oil that is those good deeds, the the things that we do to encourage our faith to grow. We want to keep that light shining as we spend time with you. Help us to remember that, Lord. Maybe even, like I said, get an accountability partner, someone who can be our Sadie and tug at our pants leg and remind us to spend time with you because it's easier that way. We need that, Lord, every single day to have those times with you. We ask, Lord, that you would bless Carson and his birthday this week, and that you would bless our dear Effie, Lord, who would be 100 this week. And we pray that you be with Deb, um, Karen, and Rod on their anniversary as well. Bless that day. We will lift up Deb's family as they're grieving the loss of her mom. And we pray for Carson, for your healing presence to touch him, Lord. We pray that you guide the doctors and everyone involved. We pray for peace this week of Veterans Day. We pray for peace in another country where soldiers are fighting and lives are lost and civilians are dying. And it's a difficult situation, but we pray that peace would come and this would end soon in Ukraine and in Israel and Palestine. We pray that Linda's daughter-in-law has a wonderful birthday this week. And we thank you that Charlie's mom is doing a little bit better with the change in her life. And pray for her to have comfort. We pray for Doug, who has some good days and some bad days. But we ask that there be more good, Lord, and that you'd help him to feel your loving presence with him always. And we ask that you would be with our York Association meeting today and all that needs to get accomplished. Bless the leaders of that and guide us in all that has to be done. And guide our church in our annual meeting today as well. That we will hear your voice and allow you to lead and guide us in all we do. Thank you for hearing our prayers, spoken and unspoken. For loving us for walking with us every single day. And now let us join our voices together as we pray the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
offering each week, it isn't just the envelope we lay over there. It's our whole being, isn't it? Our whole selves. We offer all we are to God each and every day. So let us join in our offertory prayer as we continue to offer our all. We set our hope in you, God of all ages, and seek to serve you through our offerings and our efforts to encourage and equip one another in ministry. Help us decide daily to live according to your will, preparing ourselves for the opportunities and challenges you give us. And may our offering touch the lives of those in need. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, of course, for our announcements today, our annual congregational meeting is right after the service, so please stay. We're going to have our last Bible study of this year, 1030 tomorrow morning, and then we're going to start up again in January. And you may pick up your cashews today. And there's a brief choir rehearsal next week after worship. And um, Norma has a new room at the nursing home where she's at, and that's listed in the bulletin. And on the 26th, we'll be having our next social in the social hall, bring a dish to share, and then we'll be putting up the hanging of the greens, and everybody's invited to bring in an ornament to share for the tree. Just make sure you put your name on it. No heirlooms. <laughs> and um, poinsettia time. Can't believe that's here already, but it is. Order forms are at both doors. And of course, if anyone can help with raking leaves, you probably noticed they're coming down, a lot of them out there. And I also wanted to mention, I forgot to mention this last week, I do have Christmas wreaths up at Leg Up Farmer's Market. Um, all the proceeds go to Sparrow Place and the Leg Up Farm, so if anyone's interested.
Thank you. 